welcome to Thread Therapy. This is my vlog where I talk about all the things I love about sewing. Today's video is about what I'm going to make in April, so stick around if that's what you're interested in. Hi everyone, I'm back! You might notice this, I'm wearing the same thing as in my last video, that's because I am batch filming these videos today because we know what I'm like when it comes to putting out regular content. Rubbish is the answer, absolutely rubbish. So I thought what I would do is I would crack on and make another video whilst I'm sat here and tell you all about what I plan to make in the month of April. So, if you haven't subscribed already, I'd really love it if you did, and give me a thumbs up if you like it. So, April. April is upon us, and actually the weather is looking reasonably nice for a change. I've probably spoken too soon, it'll be snowing tomorrow, but you know what? There are sunny days ahead. I can feel it coming. And as I explained to you in my last video, if you haven't watched that, uh, hop back and have a look and see what I made in March. I have made myself a coat again and I fell down a rabbit hole of fashion um, and fashion vloggers and what to wear in spring and summer and what's going to be hot and the new trends and all of that kind of stuff. And um, I decided I really liked the look of a hoodie underneath a coatigan or a long co uh, coat or cardigan. So I'm going to put in some inspiration pictures for you to see so you can get an idea of the sort of thing I'm looking to create. So in my last video I showed you my Kinder Coatigan which I've made out of this beautiful blue wool, wool mix and um, really inexpensive fabric, lovely to work with stretched a little bit whilst I was sewing it um, but then I didn't pre-treat it. Do you guys pre-treat wool mix fabric or do you just leave it as is? Because I'm not planning on putting this through the washing machine, I'm just going to spot clean it and things like that. So I didn't pre-treat it, although I have heard some people say a wet towel in the tumble dryer is the way to go but I was a bit frightened that I might end up with a piece of fabric about this big so I didn't do it. But tell me in the comments below if that's what you do. So in my inspiration pics you can see that people are tending to wear sort of hooded uh, sweatshirts underneath long line coatigans and coats and I think that's a really lovely look, quite casual but kind of a little bit smart too and with a pair of white trainers and uh, skinny jeans or white jeans I think that could look really lovely so I have gone ahead and purchased the Paige hoodie you've probably seen this one because quite a lot of people have seen this, it's very popular at the moment. The page hoodie was a sew along for Rachel at Stitched Up as well and lots of people made that and I saw all their different makes and thought I need a piece of that action, I need a piece of that action, this hoodie is going to be mine. So I bought the uh, pattern and um, it, you get uh, three different types, you can get a short sleeve one, you can make one with drawstrings at the bottom and one with a hem band. It's quite a cropped hoodie and I'm planning to make this version here which is the same as the illustration on the front so with a drawstring at the waist so it can bring it up to waist level and um, a couple of uh, drawstrings whatever you call them in the hood and I'm just going to go plain to start with because I'm feeling like this colour is going to look nice with a crisp white hoodie or maybe a grey hoodie and because I've not used that pattern before I wanted to buy myself some fabric that was reasonably inexpensive, not, not cheap but reasonably inexpensive um, so I grabbed myself some French Terry from Pound Fabrics, yes Pound Fabrics. Uh, which was, I don't know, six or seven pounds a metre, I think. So not too expensive. And it's a grey marl. It's a classic colour. It's got that sort of loop back that you expect with a French terry. It's nice and stretchy, but not too stretchy. And um, I've already washed this. It's washed well. I think it's quite lightweight, so it's going to be nice for the spring as a sort of layer underneath my coat again, so I won't get too hot. So the plan is to make myself a page hoodie. I, what I've done is I've decided to, I spoke to Ruan um, on Instagram and she said that she sized down when she made hers. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do size wise. I, it, you've got two different cup sizes, you've got A or B and then C or D for your full bust. Now when I do my measurements I come out as a size 6 in this pattern so that is a full bust of 35 
um, a waist of 28 and hips of 38, which is pretty much exactly the same as my measurements. But it wear a C cup bra. So then I was confused because if you look at the C cup measurements, my full bust then puts me into a size two. So I was like, do I want, is it, is it going to be too baggy around here? And I ummed and ahed. And in the end, I've decided to go with the AB because Ruan said she'd size down. And I thought, well, actually, I haven't got the, I'm not that well endowed in the old chest department. So I think that'll be a, a fine size for me. So we're just going to give a size six a go and see how it turns out. I hate tracing patterns. I have put a lot of posts on Instagram recently of me tracing patterns because I hate doing it. I hate it. But I can't cut into these patterns because they cost a lot of money. They're, they're not cheap to buy indie patterns. So, And also I've got a 14, nearly 15 year old girl and a 10 year old girl. And you know, the chances are this pattern will go on to be used again and again. So I have traced it begrudgingly and hope that actually I won't have to trace out again if this size six isn't the right size, but I'm hopeful it will be. So yeah, that is my first plan for April, a page hoodie in this lovely grey, mild, French terry sweatshirting fabric. So my next plan for April is another pair of trousers. I've really been on the trouser bandwagon. I love a trouser, I live in trousers, I don't sew many trousers, so we always, I don't know, I'm, I'm, you know, generalizing here, but I don't know if you guys are the same, you get drawn to all the pretty, pretty stuff that's really gorgeous and floaty and, you know, feminine and wonderful, but I don't wear that on a daily basis. On a daily basis, usually you'll find me in a Mandy Boat tee, which is what I've got on today, and a pair of jeans, that's what I wear. So I'm going with trousers and I'm going to try the Closet Core Pietra, is that how you say it? pants. I have looked up the hashtag on Instagram and I have to say I like almost everybody's version. I think they're a really flattering trouser. They're interesting with their construction because you've got this seam down the front of the leg and then sort of a built-in pocket which I think is really cool. There's um, a few versions I've seen where people have used a different colour fabric in the pocket um, and that gives it an even Diff, more different sort of interesting look. You can make shorts with this one, you can make like a tapered style leg and you can also make some wide leg ones and I think I would like all of these versions. For my first attempt at this pattern I'm going to go with the tapered leg because um, with trousers you really need to be careful with the fitting and um, make a toile I think because I don't want to waste expensive fabric if these trousers aren't going to seat me or aren't going to fit properly. So I'm going to go with this one, the version here on the front, and I've chosen to make it out of um, some viscose uh, linen. Now I put a little call out on the Fold Line Facebook group because I have this issue where I make trousers and they bag out, they bag out all the time. Anything without any spandex in it just bags out at the knees, it bags out at the bum and I hate that. Um, your trousers end up just getting bigger as you wear them. So I asked a few people what they thought would be the best type of fabric and the sort of resounding, um, what's the word? A lot of people suggested maybe a viscose linen with a bit of stretch in it. This is a viscose linen that I got from Pound Fabrics again. I think it costs in the region of six or so pounds a metre and it's in this sort of grey colour. Um, it's a nice, actually, I'm just pleasantly surprised by the quality. It's got a nice uh, amount of body to it, so I think it'll be alright for trousers. Although, when it's on a single layer, it doesn't, I think it's, a, it, I don't think you're going to be able to see through it, but it all depends. I don't know how these are going to turn out. It's kind of, it's interesting. I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to like these or not, but I'm going to make them and see, which is, you know, half the fun of sewing, isn't it? So I've already cut these out, having traced the pattern off, which took ages, like with all the patterns being traced off. If you want a little tip from me, I buy really cheap white 
uh, baking paper from Poundland. It's a pound a roll, you get 10 metres, and I can see through that quite well to trace off, um, so that's what I use. But I know lots of people use Swedish tracing paper. Does anybody actually use um, carbon paper in the tracing wheel? Because I was looking at that the other day and thinking, would that be easier if I put carbon paper down? I know some people trace their patterns directly onto their fabric, I wouldn't want to do that. I'd probably want to trace it onto another sheet of paper. But does anyone else use carbon paper? Let me know if you do and if you've had any success with it because I'd be interested. So yeah, I have decided that I will be making view B and I've gone with a size 8, I think. Let me just check. I don't want to be telling you lies. So I have plumped for the size 8 in these trousers, which is a little bit of a gamble because the size 8 is a 28 inch waist and I have got a more like a 29 inch waist and the hip is a 37 inch waist and I have got more like a 38 inch uh, hip. So um, I don't know whether or not these are going to be too tight or whether they're going to be okay. Looking at the amount of ease in the pattern. I might be okay, uh, but for a first go, I thought I'm not buying uh, really nice fabric for this. I just want to mock it up and see how I get on. And I find it really hard to imagine the finished garment when they're made out of, right, you know, like massively patterned fabric or um, calico or something like that. So I went with something that was probably nearly as inexpensive to buy at sort of six, six ish pounds a metre so that I could give it a go and see how they turn out. So wish me luck. We may find that I can't get in them. Who knows? Just have to wait and see. So what I've done is I have cut all those out and I should just show you my little project bags because I have to have stuff in a project bag around here because I have got kids and cats and stuff just goes all over the place. So this is my project bag. So I've got my two projects. The page hoodie is not fully traced yet, but I plan to finish that off this afternoon. So those are my two April projects. Let's hope that nothing gets in the way this month. And it is my birthday month, so hopefully there'll be a few things that I might get that they'll, the next video could be a haul, but then again, I might get nothing. Right, so that's what I plan to make in April. There might be more. I am a bit of a fly by the seat of your pants kind of a girl. I like a bit of spontaneous sewing. So, you know, there could be something else coming along. But I definitely want to get those two pieces sewn because I want to wear that hoodie really soon because my coat skin's finished. And I'm just interested to see how those trousers turn out. So please, if you've made the Pietra or Petra or however you say it, pants, please let me know how you found the sizing and the fit and the cut and um, I will look forward to hearing and reading all of your comments below. Anyway, it's time for me to go. I've waffled on enough. Um, thanks very much for watching and please subscribe if you've enjoyed this video today. See you next time. Bye.